hey y'all, movie retrospective time. And this was the one that you guys voted on this week. This was an interesting pick because, you know, as I've mentioned before, what I've started doing, like now that we have the, uh, the patrons like voting on what movie we're gonna do, I have like a little box and I went through Shudder, I went through Netflix, I went through Tubi and like all the horror movies that were on there, some that I'd seen, like some that I hadn't seen for a long time, but wanted to like revisit and stuff. And I wrote them all in little pieces of paper and I put them in a box. And then every week I take five of them out at random and then put them in the poll. So this week's poll, this one came out on top. I think it just beat Black Sunday by one vote. Now I thought that I had seen this movie but watching it, I don't think I did. But the weird thing about it is that the um, the cover of it is almost is kind of like iconic. I used to see it a lot, like in the video store when yeah, I was growing too. up. And I don't think I ever rented it. No, I didn't. I, I saw that cover all the time. Yeah. And, and just passed on it. Wasn't interested, you know. Um, and having seen the movie, it was a little bit disappointing. I mean, it it was this should this movie should have been really good. It could have been really good. It had all the makings of a good Australian Mad Max type apocalypse, post-apocalyptic movie, but I just gotta say it didn't quite deliver. I mean, it's about a half. I enjoyed like the first half hour of it, and then yeah. it started to kind of unravel for me. It got, it got boring. I feel like the beginning and the end were good, but in the middle it was kind of saggy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, you know what I mean? Okay, so we're talking about Dead End Drive-In, uh, in case you guys didn't know. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, so the poster, the iconic poster that we're talking about that has, like, that gothy-looking dude and, like, the big face and, like, the little drive-in at the bottom. Okay, the drive-in at the bottom, that's in the movie. That dude, I'm pretty sure, is not in the movie. No, I, I didn't I didn't see anybody that looked no. like that in the movie. I guess, they didn't, I guess, I guess the star didn't... I guess they didn't figure he was quite good looking enough, so they put somebody else on the Or project. they wanted somebody that looked more... I mean, because there's like a lot of punks and like new yeah. waivers and stuff, because this was made in 1986. Yeah. So maybe it was one of them, but it, I mean, it could have been that person, but he yeah. was like an extra, if anything. There's this Australian chick star, and then it, her last name is McCurry. She, she Natalie just, McCurry. Mad yeah. Natalie McCurry. Uh, she's some Australian beauty queen. She's great in it. Um, cute as a bug. I mean, and I liked her character in the movie. Yeah. Jenny and I were talking. I was like, man, that's exactly the kind of girl I was looking for in high school. Because <laughs> he gives her a Zippo and she's like, oh, yeah, you know. You're I mean? the best. Yeah, give him a Zippo. She was, kinda, <laughs> she was Femi and everything, but she was kind of, she was kind of a tough Tom girl. You know what I mean? Which yeah. I was big into that. Yeah. That's really and, funny. Um, yeah. But you didn't find girls like that in real life. Yeah, there was no. just movie girls. Yeah, just movie girls. Yeah. She sadly passed away in 2014, we discovered, when, yeah. we, when we IMDB'd her. Yeah, I like, think, while by, we were watching I think the movie. from cancer. Just said a long illness. Probably cancer. Well, you said that she had been involved in like some breast cancer like fundraising and stuff, so I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming that's what it was. Breast cancer, which is yeah. like really sad, because she was like really adorable in this. Yeah, she died young. Yeah. She was only two years older than me. Yeah, wow. And she died, like, what, six years ago? Seven yeah. years ago? Something like that. Yeah. So yeah. she was in her 40s still. Yeah, she was actually, um, she was, like, uh, Miss Australia, like, back mm -hmm. in the... Eight like 70s or 80s and then she was on uh an australian tv show i think but i can't remember the name of it. i think it was called chances maybe yeah. we didn't get it over here but um so she was kind of known but so this movie it's interesting too because everywhere that i see this movie come out like arrow video has done like a nice blu-ray of it like you know with um with uh you know interviews with the director and and everything but uh, who's Brian Trenchard Smith, who also directed Night of the Demons 2 and Leprechaun 4 in space, among mm. other things. <laughs> uh, so this one I'm imagining is a lot better than those. But um, <laughs> I can't really say. I haven't seen. I saw Night of the Demons 2. It was all right. But um, so this, everywhere you look, like the, the genre of this movie is always play, put as horror. But this is not a horror no. movie. Not by any stretch of the it's, imagination. It's very much like Mad Max 1 but without like the uh, the car crashes and the high adrenaline action. It attempts it in that first half hour. It kind of comes close, but then once it starts getting into the... Uh, they ended up get in, getting imprisoned in a, in a drive-in, basically. A drive-in full of fucking young people. And they're all like punk rockers and goth people. And uh, most of them don't want to escape because there's too many goddamn cute girls in there. Well, and, and they're getting fed, and, and getting it's like fed they're... And, yeah. I mean, we'll kind of get into that in a minute. So it's weird how they kind of seemed like they marketed this as a horror movie, and it's really not. It's really no. like a dystopian, um, 
comedy drama yeah. action movie. I think you missed the last like the last part of it. There was actually like a really good um, car chase like through the through the thing like oh, okay. where uh, the main character whose name is Jimmy but he's known as Krabs. Yeah, and for exactly the reason that you, you see, think you would be so named bo- that. <laughs> it, it, it it's it got so boring and so slow for me that I said, "Hold on, I'm gonna go get something to eat." And I walked out to go make something to eat, and I missed the end. But see, you missed the best part. Yeah, that might have been the best part, but that's not how movies work. Yeah, they're supposed to pull. <laughs> they're supposed to pull you in. You're supposed to get kind of immersed into in them. You're supposed to care about what's gonna happen. By the time I was an hour into it, I really didn't care what was going to happen. I had already passed the best part, and that's when they were screwing in the car. <laughs> that was the best part. Yeah, and there were some titties. She had nice proportions, very nice proportions. Yeah. One All of the night. other girls had, like, one of the other yeah. extras. I think she th- showed her boobs, too. Yeah. Like, briefly. Yeah. But, yeah, there's no, there's no gore. There's nothing like that. No. But it's more like, it kind of gave me, you know, yes, it's clearly, like, a Mad Max rip off kind of not i don't know if it rip off but an homage maybe yeah um, also gave me kind of a cherry 2000 That's what I was gonna boy say. and his dog kind of vibe to yeah. it it looked it, you could run it in the same universe as cherry 2000 boy and his dog mad max one the tone is more like cherry 2000 though that's yeah. It, it, it was kind of like reminding yeah. me of that very mad strongly Ma- mad max one is a little darker even though it had humor in it it was mad max one had a had a real dark tone to it that, of course, is iconic. You know what I mean? Yeah, this one was a little goofier, yeah. I feel like. Like I mean, Cherry 2000. Yeah, that's. I think that's the, the movie that this reminded me of most strongly. Yeah. So it's like, it's not really, it's not post-apocalyptic um, in the sense that there's been a nuclear war or like a disease no. that wiped everyone out. It's just like a dystopia. I think it yeah. was supposed to be... I couldn't figure out if it was supposed to be set in the 1990s or the early 2000s. Because, like, at the beginning, they had a thing that they were, like, um, 1987, there was this big economic crash. And then, you know, there was, was like, mass unemployment and everything. So it's more kind of a sense of, you know, the the world hasn't been wiped out, but everything's just kind of gone to shit. Yeah, it's the future from the point of view of the 80s. Right, right, right. Uh, It's definitely not the future, though. And uh, it's... It's the same situation as Mad Max. In Mad Max, it never clearly says that there was a huge nuclear war. Yeah, that there was there, like a cataclysm yeah, or anything. There was a bunch of stuff. You know, in Mad Max 1, Australia was falling apart because the criminal justice system was falling apart. And it doesn't really explain why that's happening. It's just that society is fucking like unraveling. It's just gangs, you know. Yeah. Um, and then later on in The Road Warrior... The feral kid who's telling you his version of the history of the world says that it was great wars between great tribes and the black oil stopped coming and the machines stopped, you know, and there was turmoil. It was just a general apocalypse. So from that point of of view, you could say it was post-apocalypse. It was just Mad Max's version of what the apocalypse was. Yeah. There was some nuclear stuff, but that's not what, that's not really what it was. It was a mixture of a bunch of stuff. Which yeah, might true. have been the case here because yeah. it's almost like no one really said anything about there being a nuclear war because, like I said, it says that you know there's a little yeah. text at the beginning that says like there was an economic crash and oil blah blah blah, but it didn't say anything about a war. It didn't say anything about that. But a lot of the shots like look kind of like post apocalyptic with that orange filter. Yeah, you know what I mean. I will say like the cinematography on this is very very nice. Yeah, but here's something else. You know what I mean. In Mad Max 1, Mad Max 2, 3, and 4, like Fury Road, it's the apocalypse is unraveling and getting worse as it goes. It couldn't have been a nuclear war because there was no real water left on the earth. A nuclear war wouldn't do that. Yeah. Something environmental was, yeah, it was also some kind of happening. Yeah, environmental disaster. It's kind of like the earth had shifted on its fucking axis or something and it lost a lot of its water. So there's... Yeah, I, I, you know, we, we're led to believe that it's a normal apocalypse just with radiation and shit because they're out in the desert and you're assuming that it's the outback, but it may have been that that really wasn't the outback. Maybe it, most of the fucking earth was like that. They just had to be filming it in the outback, if you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but I think they. it could have been that in Road Warrior... Yeah, just the landscape looks like post-apocalypse, whether yeah, they meant it to or not. Yeah, yeah, I think... In, <laughs> I think in I think in um, Road Warrior and in um, the other Mad Max movies that came after, like it was a fucking Beyond, Beyond Thunderdome. Thunderdome, and Can't we just I get think Beyond those two movies, I think, well, it basically says that you know there's a little little oasis where all the little kids are living. It's it's basically trying to say that the entire Earth is a desert. 
Yeah. And a nuclear exchange won't do that. Yeah, that's like like you said, that's it's more an envir- environmental it's, collapse. It's more yeah. of an environmental thing. Whereas in this movie, Dead and Drive In, it seems more like an economic collapse because it seems like people still like have houses and shit yeah. and people still have jobs. But it seems like they're making um the director is kind of making a statement about like not only the degeneration, like, you know, none of the young people can find jobs. It's like, you know, it's kind of like a shitty situation and there's like a lot of youth gangs and shit like that. But um, he's also kind of making the thing like very early on, like the main character, Jimmy, he has like a muscle bound brother, Frank, who had like actually one of the best lines in the movie. Like he yeah. comes, he comes to work out. He lifts this, the, the barbell up like a minute and then he's, he's like, doing curls and he's, and, and then he's like, yeah, why bother? I'm already strong enough. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was very funny. Yeah. But yeah, he so... He's big enough. Yeah, or he's I'm strong. Big, I think he's he said I'm strong enough, enough or I'm big enough I'm, I'm or something enough. like that. So, yeah. he's, so he is like a tow truck driver. And very early on, him and Jimmy go out on a run. And you can see that basically what happens is that there's these gangs of youths that just... <laughs> youths. That yeah. just kind of like drive around, you know, being crazy and like setting shit on fire and whatnot. And um, so the tow trucks will come and to these big accidents and then they will be like rival like tow truck drivers, but they don't care about like the people that got killed in the car because there's like all these gnarly bodies like hanging out of the fucking car and everything. They just care about like who got there first. So who's going to get like the scrap rights for the cars. So it's they're kind of making a statement about how, you know, in this world, like things are more important than people are like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like like Road Warrior. Yeah. So it's, so it's so it's basically the same. Yeah. So what ends up happening like after that um, is that Jimmy uh, unbeknownst to his brother Frank, steals his very awesome was it what was it a 1957? Yeah, it's 1957 nice. Chevy, like red and yeah. white. He yeah, steals the cars. I did not recognize. They're they're well because they were Australian. They're Australian Fords and stuff. So there's different versions. So the, they had different versions that we had. Yeah, things things that looked kind of like Mustangs. They weren't Falcons, but. Or at least uh, they weren't a Falcon XB. Maybe they were Falcons. I don't know. I just realized that we reviewed an Australian movie last week too, yeah. Lake Mungo. That was also Australia. That yeah. total. That was a total accident. But um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. So he takes Frank's beautiful, beautiful car, uh, without Frank knowing, so he can take his girlfriend Carmen, like we said, played by Natalie McCurry, to the drive-in. Now, unbeknownst to him, they have a little sign like at the at the entrance of the drive-in saying like regular people have to pay ten dollars, unemployed can pay like three it's three fifty or something like that. So the trick is that if you tell them you're unemployed and you get in cheaper, then they won't let you leave because yeah. essentially this drive-in is a prison camp for unemployed youth. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they just they just want to keep them in there, like to keep like, them off the streets. Here. Yeah. So, but the thing about it, though, is that most of the people there don't really want to leave no. because, like, they don't have jobs to go out to. They don't, you know, they have their cars in there. They set up a little thing. They give them meal tickets. They show movies. You know, they have... It's a big orgy, too, and they're having all kinds of fucking fun, basically. Right. And it's like, yeah. so they've, so it's basically made, like, this little, everyone's made little hovels out of their cars, yeah. and it's like they're cooking, and this, you know, there's trade, yeah. and there's drugs, and, you know, the, the guy that manages the drive-in, like, will give you beer, and... If you were 17, you'd love it. That's why they didn't want out. That's what I mean. So most yeah. of them don't want to leave. Yeah. And the thing about it is that, I mean, Jimmy... Even though his life isn't like super fantastic, like out like his he's got a mom, like his mom's Italian, like and his he loves his brother and shit like that. I think his name was Rossini. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> <laughs> that was another funny scene where there yeah. were him and his brother were at the table and they were eating spaghetti with their very Italian mom and she was like, Why are you so small? You're not yeah. like your brother. You know, yeah. Yeah, talking about how like, he, he's, he's he like was. I'm getting bigger, I'm getting bigger, yeah. I'm big getting bigger. I'm bulking up, I'm bulking. Yeah, he's like eating, eating all he's the trying to war- yeah, eating as much as he can and work out as big <laughs> It's like the size difference is amazing. His brother's like fucking two feet taller than him. <laughs> he wasn't that small of a guy. He though. wasn't he's, that small. It's just yeah. that his brother was huge. Yeah. They I think that's yeah. why they cast like so yeah. they would look like a lot distant. Because he doesn't look that, t- he's not like out of shape, obviously, because he's like runner, he's a runner and stuff, but he's like a lot smaller than his brother is. So, so Jimmy, aka Krabs, is really the only person who, when he figures out finally that they're not allowed to leave this drive in because there's like electrified fences and like the cops. Like, the cops come and took the wheels off his car, basically, so he couldn't get out. And yeah. then, like, it's all surrounded by electrified fence, and, the you know, the cops are kind of in on it, and they're paying 
the manager of the drive-in like to keep them all in there. But like I said, nobody wants to leave because they don't have anywhere else to go. And one of the big um, things is that Jimmy and his girlfriend, Carmen, like as soon as she figures out, like, you know, we're not supposed to leave. She's like, whatevs. Yeah, she didn't care. Well, because I, they established early on that she had actually, I think she had run away from home. Yeah. Um, and her parents were looking for her and she didn't want them to find her. So she was like totally not bothered. She's just like, okay, yeah. well, we'll just stay here and... We'll have food given to us. We can watch movies every night. There's beer. Yeah. There's drugs. There's yeah. other people. She made friends with like some of the other girls in the bathroom. They did her hair and shit like that. So she yeah. was like, why should I go anywhere? It's like so much nicer in here. But I think like what the director of the movie and he, I think he's even said that, like said this like on in documentaries and stuff was that he was kind of trying to say that, you know, the world had got so shitty that that's all that these like teenagers, even though they were clearly all in their twenties or thirties, like that's kind of all they had to look forward to, like with this quote unquote junk culture or trash culture where they would just like watch these shitty movies and like eat shitty food and like not really care about bettering themselves or not really care about getting out of it. You know what I mean? So they're almost like normals, normal kids. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was like, I, it's I kind way, of, it's way, yeah. the way we were. And then like, you know, later on they yeah. kind of get a little bit into, although it's weird because they kind of, toward the end of the movie, when they started bringing in, um, you know, like some Asian people, like, for, you know, into like, they started bussing them in and like putting them in the thing. Yeah. And yeah. then like kind of all the whiteies started getting all like butthurt about it, yeah. like getting all national front or whatever they had in Australia at the time. Yeah. Um, and it's really weird because You're trying to start a race war, race. War. Yeah, they, so, right. Yeah, but it's yeah. like it's really weird because they kind of went with that, and then it's like it didn't really kind of go anywhere. No. Like it was just kind of like there wasn't any reason. For, that's a lot of that's a lot of the problem of this movie is that it would come up with ideas that you would think it was going to be important, and maybe it would go somewhere, but they wouldn't. And uh, there was a lot of opportunities to take this into a really interesting direction, but it didn't really do it. I mean, did. I think that really the whole thing about, I mean, the whole thing about them introducing that, because it was pretty late in the movie that they did that. I think it was just one showing that like some of the people that were already picking on Jimmy were dicks, which we already knew because they had tried to kill him. But also I think it was just so that all the, most of the white kids at the um, drive-in would all be in one place because they were all having some little <laughs> white person meeting or something. Um, so they would all be in one place. Well, it was to... Australia. Most people were white. Yeah. Well, I mean... no, I'm just saying that they wanted them all in one place so that Jimmy, the main character, yeah. like for him, for all them to be in there so he could make his like final escape because he like right. stole a police vehicle and they chased him all around the um, drive-in and shit like that. Which, like I said, you missed that because that was actually like pretty yeah. good. And one of the stuntmen that worked on this, I think was also one of the stuntmen in uh, Mad Max 2, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a road warrior. So, um... You know, so they did have that going. And some of the stunts were, like, actually pretty amazing, um, you know, at that sense. But at, as you said, like, the beginning of it was good because I liked, like, a lot of the character establishments. Like, b before they got to the drive-in, like, yeah. when they first got to the drive-in. Like, the interactions between him and his girlfriend, the interactions between him and his brother. But once he got there and, you know, started talking to the manager, it seemed to take him a really long time to figure out that they couldn't leave or figure yeah. out what was going on. And you'd think that that would be very easy to figure out. It wouldn't take him very long. Right. I think part of it was, I think part of what happened was, is that the location is pretty good for a movie. All yeah. The, the cast and the, the costumes and all those cars, it looks really good. It's a gorgeous looking yeah, it's, movie. It's even shot really well. Yeah. And I think that's the downfall of the movie. He's trying to keep it in that location where all this good fucking shit is. <laughs> but, that, but that kind of fucks up your story because it's now confined into this one location. There's not much you can really do with the story. Yeah. That's what I think happened with it. It needed to remain a mobile story outside. I didn't, I just didn't like the, yeah, uh, the drive-in thing should have just been a scene of, of a few minutes if you ask me. Yeah. I mean, I like the concept of them like kind of, you know, closing everybody into this drive-in and then, like, a lot of the kids not wanting to leave and that being the conflict. But I feel like he could have done more with that because, like I said, it really does seem like it took a really long time yeah. 
where he was just kind of like hanging around trying to get wheels for his car so he could leave. There was a little bit of conflict because his girlfriend didn't want to leave and he didn't really want to leave her there. Yeah. There was some conflict with some of the other like guys at the drive-in who didn't like him because he was new or whatever. So it's like there was a little bit of that, but it just seemed like there wasn't enough long. of it to sustain yeah, the middle time. act of the film. But then like the, the third act, like when he was like, yeah. you know, when the you know, racist people were having their meeting and he was like doing his escape. That was actually cool. Like there was like a lot of really good shots. It was like a really good stunts. There was all that kind of shit. Like all the cars like driving over shit and like driving over, yeah. you know, crashing into things. I'll just have and to take your word for it. No, it's like, it was cool. Like the end part was really cool, but that was kind of the main thing that I had with it was just like the yeah. middle was like, it was way too long. It was kind of slow. Like the yeah. middle was kind of slow. Like that, they could have done, it seemed like they were just like hanging around from the minute that they got into the fucking drive in. And then from the time he gets into the drive in and he escapes, that really should only be about five, seven, 10 minutes. You didn't, there's not much story to tell inside that drive. If you ask me, uh, this, it's, I mean, well, I mean, you could have come up with something because, like I said, he seemed to have the threads of some of yeah. of some stories and conflicts in there, like with his girlfriend not wanting to leave, like you know the other guys, like maybe there could have been something with them, like you know the other people that didn't want the Asians there. It's like there was like threads of it, but it seems like it wasn't like developed enough, yeah, like it, to sustain like the middle part of the movie. Yeah, it's just not really not important. Think about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, okay, in a boy with his in, in a boy and his dog, he ends up in that underground uh, community. And he was down in there for quite a while, part of the movie, maybe 15 minutes of the movie, 15, 20 minutes of the if movie. If I remember correctly, But yeah. a lot happens down there. A bunch of weird shit is shown that kind of draws you into it. Then you find out they're going to use him as breeding stock, and then he has to get out of there. So it was more exciting. Yeah. You know? the Just the, the stories that went on inside the, the drive-in, the, the, they weren't compelling for me. I wish, yeah. You know, I, was, I got bored with it by the time he escaped. I didn't care if you escaped or not by the time that that happened. <laughs> I was like, ah, fuck it. I didn't. Um, I, was, I think I liked this movie more than you did, but um, I I kind of the the middle of it did kind of try my patience yeah. a little bit because yeah. it, like I said, it seemed to take him a very long time to figure out, hey, bud, you know, you can't get out of here, and like the cops are in on the shit. They're you know taking the payoff. The cops were like bringing the manager of the driving drugs like to give to the people, and you, you know. know the, there's enough footage there, you could probably re-edit that. Maybe take 10 minutes of it out and fucking reorder certain things and probably... Yeah, you could just shorten it up a little fix bit, probably. It. The movie could probably be fixed. I think it's a pacing issue more than anything else. Yeah, I don't... Like, I, I liked all the actors. I liked all yeah. the characters. I liked the concept. Um, like I said, the cinematography is really, really nice. Um... I liked a lot of the uh, the music. It was very newer. I think they yeah. had, there were some hunters and collectors in there, um, which if anybody remembers them, I kind of mm. remember them. But, um, you know, so there was a lot of like really good shit about this good. movie. But yeah, it, like I said, it looked amazing. Like, and yeah. when I figured out, when I found out that that director had also done like Leprechaun 4 and stuff, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that one looked as good as this one. But this yeah. one, like the, the shot setups were like really, really nice. And so I do, I that's really the only criticism I have of it is that, it just seemed like the middle act was too long. And there was like too... It's weird to say because it seemed like nothing happened, but it seemed like a lot of threads were introduced that they could have done something with that they didn't really yeah, do anything with. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, so... I think it's pacing issue. It just yeah, I think that's all it was. It needs I think to be re-edited. The, the middle act needs to be re-edited. That's what I think. Yeah. And I've been... I watched a couple of people's, like, other uh, reviews of it, and most people seem to say about the same thing. Good. It's like some people yeah. seem to like it more than others. Uh, Quentin Tarantino really likes this movie yeah. for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard of this movie, like, other than seeing it, like, in the in the video store, and I don't think I ever rented it, um, remember we watched that uh, documentary called Not Quite Hollywood, The History of Ozploitation? Yeah. It was all about Australian yeah. movies. They mentioned this one in there. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's kind of... So I I think I was kind of thinking of that in the back of my mind. And then I saw that it was on Tubi. So I added it to the box and then it got voted for. So we uh, watched it last night. And it's like, like I said, I, you know, it was cool looking. It was a cool concept. I didn't love it. Um, but I don't know. I, was, I, I might give it another whirl one of these days. But I really did. The, the middle part did seem to go on like a little bit too long. And I, f I feel like there was more they could have done with some of the storylines that they introduced it might be worth it just to see natalie mccurry 
She is a cutie pie, isn't she? Yeah, and she walking around in that little fucking black PPC dress. You got you got one of those. I do. Like yeah. I I think I have one. Yeah. Well, mine's not exactly the same because hers has red. hers yeah. buttoned and mine yeah. ties right. like yeah. corset ties in the front yeah. with red. But other than that, it was like the same cut. Yeah, it's a good scene of her inside the car. She's fucking riding on a dude. Fucking, she's fully nude and shit. You get a good profile shot. <laughs> Big old boobs. They're not fucking huge boobs, but they're you know. You know. They're, They're well formed boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cute. It's funny because every cute. every time, like, because he was like looking down at his thing, and like then the, one of the other one of the other girls like yeah, was in the shower, alert. and I yeah. said titty alert. Yeah, I'm looking. And he's like, what? Like, Where? Huh? So, okay, all right. Yeah, she's calling it. Calling. She's making sure I'm doing my job. <laughs> she's funny, man. Well, she's you know, good. you need to weigh in on that shit. It's like let's let's get a let's get a rating on those well, you ones because it was a different chick back in. <laughs> Back when you were back when you were 15, 16 years old in the fucking pre-internet porn era, that <laughs> shit was fucking yeah, all right. You, you look, now you're like yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, there's just tits not, everywhere. It's, it's just, we're drowning ever. in tits. Yeah, it's not it's not even nudity by today's standards. Yeah, that's, hardly. That's true. Well, you know that was only an American thing anyway. Pretty much, I think in the UK, fucking you could walk around top of so I don't think they even cared about it. They had it in wasn't it in the TV guide? Uh, yeah, the one yeah. newspaper, the Page yeah. Three Girl. Yeah. She was, uh, yeah, they had a different chick yeah. in there that's going, look at my titties, like that every single day. Yeah, that wouldn't fly in the U.S. back in those days. No, you couldn't no. show. Well, and you could show tits on TV back then, too, and you could swear on TV, like after yeah. 8 p.m.? Right. 9 p.m.? Something no, like that. No way you were going to get away with that in the United States, especially in the Bible Belt era. Yeah, that's why. Well, yep. that's that's why Europeans always thought that we were a bunch of Puritans over here, just yeah. because they thought that was the dumbest shit ever. That was only the Bible Belt. Yeah, and they were, it was, and those people were old back then. So they're all probably dead. Now. Yeah, they're all dead now. <laughs> that was like my grandmother's era. Yeah, remember grandmother's, uh, not era, but uh, her generation. Yeah, this. Just... And that boy, they were weird. I know they were. They they're... worried about everything. They read into everything. Because they, they were just, a bunch of, like, perverted freaks, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, they read into everything. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Why is her hair blue? What does that mean? It means her hair is blue, but what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> they did. They always thought there was, like, some kind some of... Some kind of meaning. Well, I, like, just because I like I realized looks, why, or... though, later on. I was basically told why. I saw an interview of, of, a, of an old guy who grew up in that generation... And he said colors meant things to that generation. If you wore fucking like yellow on Tuesday, it meant you were gay. If you fucking <laughs> if you wore black, I remember any, the earring thing. Like yeah. if is it left? Is it right? It's yeah. Like, if you were if you wore black, then that meant you were a criminal. You know what I mean? Just all kinds of weird. They had all the, they had all these fucking weird uh, color codings. It has I guess it had to do with being from a real repressed society where you couldn't express things openly. You had to do it in innuendo using color coding and shit like that. Everything meant something. That's like the neo-Nazis with their fucking boot laces. Yeah. Like all the different color like boot laces. That might have come from an meant. era similar to that anyway. Maybe it did. That's very strange. Yeah. I don't know. It's very weird. Um, yeah, it's because you can't just fucking <laughs> say what you are, you know. So you had to use all these fucking weird yeah, colors. Hey. And, and so, you know. I've and got it a was yellow shirt. You want to? Just like, you know, it's fucking like my dad, even my dad's generation, you know, when they were kids, you know, fucking how long your hair was uh, indicated whether, what your political affiliation was. Were you a fucking hippie or were you yeah. some kind of a this or that? And and they just, they, that generation could not imagine a world that didn't give a shit about that. Yeah. You know, of really how long. I remember was. hearing about like uh, Stephen King, you say when he was growing up in the sixties and seventies, like he yeah. had long, like not long, not by today's standards. It yeah. was just like over their ears a little bit. And yeah. he's like, he used to get beat up all the time, like it's, in bars and shit. It's like I told you, that. no matter who you are, where you live, the, your, the future from your point of view will be unacceptable. You won't like it. And my grandparents' generation, if they were around around today, they wouldn't like any of this. <laughs> they would not like it. Because they wouldn't understand most of it. It wouldn't approve What's of going it. What's going on? Why do they carry these little things? Oh, fuck the internet. That's just, that's just garbage. <laughs> it's all porn. It's all garbage. There's nothing there. It, it is mostly anything. porn. I mean, to be no, fair. No, there's all kinds of shit. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's you cats know. on there, too. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, I just, I just, it's just, you know, we're going off on these, we're going off <laughs> in another okay. direction. It doesn't matter. But yeah, so uh, if you're into Australian uh, movies and you haven't seen this one, like I said, it says it's a horror movie. It's not. It's kind of like, if so if you like Mad Max or Cherry 2000 or something like that, 
um, you know, you might want to check it out. As I said, it's on Tubi, so you can watch it for free. And uh, that'll do it for this movie retrospective. We'll see you guys later. Bye.